In introduce my co-chair, uh, Pei Yang Wang. Uh, we're going to talk here about uh, day and nighttime SLR and megahertz repetition rates in Kratz. Hello, everybody. Um, today, I would like to uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, today, I would like to talk about our new development in the direction of uh, megahertz uh, laser ranging in GATS. And we will talk about some new developments. I think better you first look back to the history. And this is, I took the chart from Mr. John Deckner. And you remember, I think most people remember not remember, get some, read some paper that our first laser ranging light uh, back to uh, 60s in last century. And in, in last 90s, and Zhang also introduced this uh, uh, laser ranging 2000 concept into our community. And our guard station was uh, one of the earliest station to make this uh, high repetition rate uh, technique into, uh, into operation. And from this chart, uh, you also see uh, the single shot position is decreased a lot since decays. Of course, this is not only due to uh, the intro intro introduction from the, from the high repetition rate. There are lots of improvement devices and techniques. And, but I believe, uh, just uh, in my opinion, uh, high repetition rate, laser ranging technique improve this uh, a lot. And now let's start for doing some uh, megahertz experiment. And of course you need these uh, this, uh, commercial devices. You need the support from the company as we have seen in the last talk. And therefore we, at the beginning, we borrow one laser from, from this German company. And finally, we, we, uh, when the VVC, we are in the good direction, then we ordered. And this uh, laser has a, a maximum power over 40 watts at one megahertz repetition rate in infrared. And we built our own uh, second harmonic generator and to produce uh, 25 microjoules at one megahertz in green. And this laser also suitable for Geosciences because it's a very short process. And also we are using, okay, this part is not that fast anymore. And we, uh, we use this MPD detector from Italian companies. And this is a little bit smaller, and, but it's fast. And also we are testing different uh, ET counters. And you know this, uh, you have seen this even tech. And also we are using the, we are testing currently this uh, Swabian instrument called Time Take Ultra. And when you build up, uh, when you finish all this ordering or organization uh, for the devices, and you have to do some, all the homework at, at, at the station. And there are two issues. The first is the, you have to upgrade your program and this will, be not, this will not be the, the topic within this talk. I will only concentrate on, on the timing. So why timing is so important? Uh, because we are most stations, we are working on the single photon or multi photon uh, regime. And so our system is very sensitive and we, we, we very sensitive to, to photons, to noise, to, to returns. And we have to apply in most cases, we have to apply range gate to gate, to gate the detector. This is our temple uh, future. And between 1 to 10 hertz and kilohertz, there are not too much difference. Just uh, you fire your, your laser more faster. And, uh, and for kilohertz, you have many, many, uh, fly, many, many uh, laser shots in, in flight. And even things at the very beginning, uh, we, we take the advantage of atmosphere uh, backscatter.
to align our laser beam direction. This is good point, but when coming to the kilohertz system, so this problem starts. So in kilohertz, as I said, there are many uh, shocks in flight simultaneously, and when uh, you fire your laser, and at the same time, one return arrive, you have to open your gate, and then there's a collision card. So we, in kilohertz system, we just simply shift the laser uh, shot if we expect some returns at the same time. But just remember, if you are doing one uh, megahertz repetition rate laser ranging, the pulse interval is uh, just one microsecond. And for, for, for this purpose, you have to shift at least 60 microseconds to avoid all this collision. For this case, megahertz, we cannot just shift this simply. And what we go, and we go to burst mode. The burst mode is also, you can uh, consider this as a ping pong mode. So first, sorry. First, you fire your laser uh, during transmitting phase. And for one time of flight, and once the first pulse return from the satellite and expect to your detector. And then you switch to receive, or we switch to receiving phase and collect all the, the laser pulses and, and then repeat again, again, and then again. And here also you see from our residuals, this is our system is definitely 50% duty cycle. This works very well and So when you finish all your homework, I think we have done everything, uh, not really, and you get some results. And I would like to ask you for five seconds, just guess what the result we get. The first is our disk is <laughs> heavily okay, overloaded because too much data. I will show you some numbers. So these two, uh, these two charts is the same, just uh, one table and one histogram. And for one as, well as a Swarm B satellite, you see the, the red is our uh, megahertz return per seconds. This is 265K per second. Even for geostationary satellite, which has a distance from our station 40,000 kilometers, and we reach per second 800 points. This is uh, amazingly uh, clear. We, we got really shocked. And if you take the, the, the number point bin size into account, you, you can easily get how many uh, points per normal seconds, uh, per normal points. I would say this is just a possibility. Of course, we are not so stupid to fill, to fill up the whole uh, normal point uh, bin. And, but it gives you a good chance to switch faster than kilohertz system to track more passes, to get more normal points, to track different satellites. Con uh, Okay, all you have seen is uh, only during that time. We gate during the receiving phase, gate the detector constantly. So detector continuously receive the photons. But this is not the solution for daytime. Daytime you have, you know, you have a high background noise, so you must find something. And you have, for megahertz system, you only have one microsecond to do everything. So PC, our PC is fast, but not in real time. And in our case, our, we are using FPGA to generate a range gate, and we need at least 10 microseconds to do everything. And just also, you can you just assume you are tracking a geostationary satellite. Uh, you have uh, more than 200K in flights, so you have, you have to set up such FIFO in your FPGA. 200K is nothing for PC, but it's a huge data for FPGA chip.
And then we did some study. So first we try to uh, check our laser. So we use an inter interval counter and get a quite feeling out of this laser. You see from this, sorry. You see from this laser, uh, if you fire at a one mega, megahertz repetition rate, so we get pulse to pulse interval, peak to peak only 1.1 nanoseconds. So this is quite stable. And second, and you don't have to calculate the time of flight for each start pulse. Why? Because just take this uh, Swarm A as an example. Swarm A, you know, is uh, 500 kilometers uh, height, is fast. And when the satellite is in near the horizon, is fly to your station. And so you have the very uh, high varying into a, a of this time of flight. And during the satellite is very high. For example, in this case, is 80, 82 degrees elevation. So the, the vary of uh, time of flight is, is nothing. So therefore, we compared how often we should calculate the time of flight. So then finally, we found out if we fire, uh, we, we calculate per 100 microseconds one time of flight. This is good enough to reach five nanoseconds uh, accuracy for your range gate generator. So therefore, we get this idea of uh, propagated range gate for megahertz uh, repetition rates, laser ranging, uh, in application of uh, daylight. So in the, in the transmitting phase, you have nothing changed. You just fire your laser constantly. And, but during receive phase, you just need to calculate this blue return, uh, range gate and add a fixed delay. The delay is your laser interval. So the FPGA got relaxed and they are happy working with us and we got some data. I want to, okay, here we get some low flies, AGSI, Stella with 100 kilohertz, one megahertz and the return code is not too bad for daylight and during the sun is over horizon. I want to point out is at the moment what we are working I think, sorry, I think this is, uh, th there's a mistake. This is the three nanometer uh, filter. So in the yes, next step, we apply to, okay, this might be our plan to, to, in to introduce a very narrow uh, mm, filter for daylight purpose. And out of the big uh, quantity of data, and we see a lot of uh, new, new things or similar things as uh, kilohertz. Uh, first, satellite signature. You know those satellites and we have beacon, se several layers of return, uh, ritual reflector, checks, and and, we said, and also lasers. We will get, to look, uh, get a close look to this Ajisa and Laris at the next uh, slide. So this is Ajisa very short. Uh, I, I plot very short here. Uh, this is one, only one second. So you see first duty cycle 50%, but we see the ritual in, out, within one second, almost four different uh, ritual reflector. Because HSI now is spinning with the rate about from two to three seconds per revolution. And for Laris 2, this is pretty new for us because uh, for our kilohertz system, we don't see this uh, satellite signature. This is due to uh, the design in a way to, to use one inch uh, ritual reflector to decrease the satellite signature. Unfortunately, we still found out. <laughs> and now I come to the conclusion. Uh, we have uh, successfully demonstrated the megahertz technique with uh, our, in our station during day and night. And our return per normal point got heavily, uh, got significantly increased 
by some 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 factors and proper range gates uh, in FPGA also works very well and uh, during daytime. And with our uh, 25 microjoule per pulse, uh, we think we are in the single photon regime. And also the CSNet signature is really is more clear than our two kilohertz system. So this is my last uh, page. Uh, there are lots of questions we have to work on. And with that, I thanks for your attention. And if there's any questions, I try to answer. If not, I will just simply add it here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who would like to ask a question? Thanks a lot for your nice presentation and the impressive results. I have a question concerning, you know, what's the impact of gating your, uh, your receiver with uh, one megahertz for daytime observations? Do you see any, you know, negative impact? You mean the new detector? Yes, the new detector. Well, we are... I don't see anything. Actually, uh, we try to. Yeah, this is uh, uh, this is some just a preliminary uh, setup, and we see the same. If we okay, we, as I said, we didn't fill up the whole normal point. We just get to get to get it very short, and we see the RMS of uh, per normal point is kind of uh, same as two kilohertz. This is at the moment. Okay. I think we will do some uh, investment. So gating with one megahertz is not an issue. Uh, actually, this lay, this detector has a, is is different from our spot. So they have a self uh, active cringing in inside. Yes. So the gating cannot influence this. The gating only gate the output of the detector. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So thanks for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, um, if I got it right, you have the burst mode, which is 50% of a window firing and 50% waiting for the returns. Is that correct or not? Uh, we fire for one time of one flight. And we have a break, 100 mm. microseconds, to, uh, to avoid these collisions. Mm. And then receive for another one time of flight. I understand that the laser is still firing at 100 kilohertz, but if you uh, take a look at the whole cycle, would it then be still 100 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz? Uh, yes. It was also 100 so kilohertz. you have to, if you calculate, yes, per, if you fire at the 1 megahertz, hmm. so you only get 500 k shots per, per, per second. That's more a question for terminology because you're going to burst mode, you know. Of course, the, this is 100 kilohertz firing, but then you wait. So if you take a look at the full cycle, it's only half. For example, if it's 50%, that's a little bit difficult maybe with terminology. Okay, uh, okay I'm going to go around. Uh, last question from, from Tom. And then we'll, uh... I have a comment and a question. Um, I think we are becoming like VLBI in terms of um, the proliferation of data, and then eventually we may have to correlate the data to properly match the transmit and receive process that we get. Um, but the, my question is, um, what is the ultimate limit of the detector in terms of uh, uh, gating as well as recovering the gain of the system for the next shot? What is the uh, limiting factor? I'm afraid I have to add one in my question list. <laughs> so I cannot simply answer, sorry. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you very much.